We've spoken a lot about code and computing, but very little about computers. I love computer scientists, but the sealed boxes and the silver containers of modern computers hide a lot of complexity from us. And as a result, computers feel very foreign. Nowadays, computers come in many shapes and sizes, but how do computers actually work? And what is inside of a computer? So what are computers made of? Hardware? and software. The electrical or mechanical parts of a computer are called hardware. The instructions and the programs inside the computer are the software. Hardware and software work together to run a computer. A computer screen is an example of hardware and everything we see on that screen is software. Software makes up a significant part of the things we like to do with and on computers. Computer architecture is looking at computing below the surface of software. Each component inside a computer has a very specific task. So today we'll learn about the different components inside of a computer. This one here is called the Central Processing Unit, the CPU. Can you say it out loud with me on CPU, count of three? Yes. Nope, number five. On count of three, one. Two, three. CPU. Good job. And do you know what this guy does? Nothing. No. The opposite. It's very, very busy. It gives instructions to everyone else. It gives commands like fetch this, do that, do that. But you know what else this guy does? It doesn't remember anything. Imagine if you could remember nothing of your own. You would need to rely on someone else. And Pierce, can you show me the one on the bottom? This one? No. Nope. This one. This one. Okay. So guess what this one's name is? This is the RAM memory. The RAM memory. The random access memory. Let's say it all out aloud together. One, two, three. The RAM memory. So this guy is the helper of the CPU and it fetches information for it because the CPU doesn't remember anything. And guess where it goes? It goes to the mass storage, which is this guy. And the mass storage is the place where all your summer vacation photos go to, all your um, games, if you play games, this information goes there. It's that long-term access memory that doesn't disappear when you turn off the computer. So the CPU, the random access memory, the RAM memory, and the mass storage. And then we still have two components to go. This guy here, and this guy here. And they both have very special roles. This is the GPU, the graphics processing unit. Can we say it out loud? One, two, three. GPU. GPU! And the GPU is a little bit like the CPU. It also is in charge uh, of giving instructions to everyone else. But this guy here gives instructions to the screen. So everything you see on the screen is defined and decided by the GPU. And then there's the final component of the computer, the ROM memory, the read-only memory. And this is like a memory where all of the information you don't accidentally want to delete from the computer goes into. So now you've met all of the components that go inside the computer. So how do all these components work together? Let's try it out. Hmm. Let's see, I want to turn on my computer. And for that to work, I think I need the help from the ROM. ROM, could you call please and wake every component up? Perfect, good job. And let's see, maybe next I want to do some math with my computer. CPU, could you tell me what is two plus three? Two plus three is five. Absolutely perfect. Wonderful. And I wonder what I should do next. Maybe I want to move the cursor three pixels to the right. For that to work, I think you, CPU, need to talk to the GPU. Shake hands. Wonderful. Now let's get to work. I'm going to open up my photo app, my movie app, my music player. Oh my goodness, that means that the computer becomes really slow because the RAM memory has slowed down and now it starts to spin around. Oh my goodness, I need to close a few apps to do that. And finally, let me see, 
I think I want to get some summer photos from last year. And that would mean that first the CPU sends a request to the RAM memory, which is the fast memory. So go and shake hands with the RAM memory. And <laughs> then the RAM memory walks over to the mass storage over there to fetch the photos. Beautiful. And then you run back to the CPU. <laughs> and then the CPU, you give instructions to the GPU. And you give them to me. So that, of course, was a bit of a simplification. But every time you click something on a computer, there are millions of tiny mechanisms at play. So now that we've learned more about the hardware of the computer, let's focus for a moment on the software. And that brings us to the final part of the computer, the operating system, that would be me. I'm like a movie director, making sure that all the hardware and software components talk to each other. I manage the memory of the computer, I manage the applications, and I make sure that everything works seamlessly together. I would make a Scout app, and then you can solve big problems there. I would make an app where I say I get a football player. I would make an app where you, where you could search the book's name and then you could select the book and the computer is going to read for you. Even though computers might be magical, they are not made of magic. They are made of logic. Deep inside the computer, it's only electricity. At the lowest level, there are the bits. Billions of tiny electronic switches that only know how to go on and off. Computers at their core do their thinking in a language made of these electronic pulses. When you combine these bits, you get the logic gates. They are circuits that transform the electricity into a mathematical language. And nowadays, we can put over 300 million of these tiny circuits in one of the microchips. A computer does things that are simpler than first grade math, but a large enough bunch of switches can compute anything. Computers might seem smart, but it's only because they work at the speed of electricity. So this is how electricity turns into logic, how logic turns into hardware, and how hardware turns into software. Computers haven't really changed radically in terms of the underlying architecture over the last half century. The rules for a room-sized mechanical computer are the same rules that would be built into the circuits of vacuum tubes, transistors, and now microchips. At every step, the binary logic of one and zero. Finally, what Alan Kay said, computers are to computing as instruments are to music. Dear Linda, what is inside a computer? What will future computers look like? Mm -hmm.